Okay, so as I mentioned, we're going to have exam two on a Thursday. The uh, online section we'll have there is Wednesday. Uh, and as before, it is a 50 point test. And so it's going to be maybe 45 or so Scantron items and then a couple three iClicker two items. And those will probably be calculations or some kind of a multi, it's going to be more than just a multiple choice. There might be a multiple choice iClicker question, but for, to start it, and then after that, it'll be some uh, larger answers, either a short answer where you're typing in numbers and letters, or a calculation where you're typing in a number, you know, like 5.3 or something like that. All right, now you're going to have to do, uh, we're going to do an iClicker calculation today, and you're going to have to use the decimal point, Hannah, on uh, the uh, eye clicker. All right, it's hard to see. All right, and uh, uh, so we're going to have the lights all the way up, and, and you'll be able to use it, all the lights, and then you'll be easier to, for you to see. And then on, on Thursday, when you're taking the exam, uh, you'll also have uh, the lights on all the way, so hopefully it'll help you. All right. Now, what I want you to bring, as always, uh, any calculator that's got a square root key. I saw somebody in my astronomy class, I don't know, was it this class or astronomy? They had a little uh, $3 job from, from Walmart with a square root key, and that's it. You know, a little, something like you would give to a, you know, a sixth grader. So that works. All right, so square root key, uh, but not a cell phone calculator. Bring the raspberry colored Scantron, uh, and it's the one where you bubble in your PID. And uh, you know what? Did we, did we, ha we didn't have any errors on our PIDs, did we? No. You guys are the first ever genius section not to mess up a single PID or a single test form. In other words, um, Darian and me nagging you as you handed in your tests worked, right? So, but anyways, you're going to do it again. You put it in your PID, all right? And we'll try to nag you about that. You know, it's the number on your ID card. And actually, you don't have to type in the letter or bubble in the letter. You do have to bubble in the number like this one. Uh, and, uh, and that'll be good. And then test form A, B, or C, or D, depending on which one you get. And you guys did well on that last time. Uh, use a number two pencil and a good eraser, as I've mentioned before. And uh, that'll be good. Uh, oh, and by the way, if you come to class and you don't have your eye clicker or a Scantron, um, I'll, I'll be having a little conversation with Chuck Norris after, after the test, see if he can get you to see the right, the right way of doing stuff. So bring your eye clicker too, as always. And then, uh, but you may not use a cell phone for any reason, so I'll ask you to put those away, as I always do, and, uh, and that'll be good. Uh, so if you don't have a, the only thing you may have a little bit of difficulty with is figuring out a square root longhand, which, you know, you can do, you know, just try a number that you, th you have to guess and then try a number and then multiply it by itself and longhand, and if it comes that close, then you can write that in. You know, then maybe try another one a little higher or a little bit lower, and you can, you can do that by hand. Okay, so you're going to bubble in the test form A, B, C, or D as well as always. Okay, so you guys did pretty good on that last time. Uh, the formula uh, that you need uh, will be in the matching part at the beginning of the exam. First mm, four or five questions, five or six questions maybe. All right. And uh, so don't worry about, as always, do not worry yourself about memorizing. Worry yourself about recognizing and thinking with the equation or thinking in terms of the equation. Now we're going to go through some of that today with the conservation of energy equations. You know, the, the, 
the conservation of total mechanical of energy, the definition of GPE, gravitational potential energy, and the definition of kinetic energy. But in addition, don't forget, we have conservation of momentum. And your homework assignment tonight, it'll be a big one, and it will be a, a good, solid review, and there'll be some momentum concept uh, workouts in addition to a kinetic energy type brain burner. All right. And so uh, now I understand that there's a, a lecture guide that, or a, a study guide that was uh, written. And uh, it looked okay, you know. I'm not, I'm not giving it my official endorsement, but it wasn't too bodacious. And, uh, but, you know, the thing is, you, you know, it's, it's like a lot of things. The more sources that you use to learn or to interact with people, the more uh, carefully you're going to narrow in on the successful outcome or the successful understanding of a concept or figuring out the successful method for calculating a downward speed on a brain, kinetic energy brain burner. Okay, stuff like that. So don't just, you know, and it, it was nice, I looked at it, uh, but don't just use that. Your lecture notes, that's your study guide. That's the, what, the way you should think about your lecture notes, as I always uh, encourage students to do. All right, let's go to homework nine. Brain burner time. And we had a basketball uh, brain burner. This was the image for it. Um, envisioning, you know, where you're in a gym and the elevation of the rafters is 10 meters. All right, so it's not a very big gym, but you know, you could play hoops there. And um, the hoop itself is down here at about 3.05. Where's my cursor? Here it is. Down here at about 3.05. Now, you didn't have any calculations with 3.05 on this homework 9. Now, I'm not saying nothing about homework 10. But uh, you had different elevations to work with. And what I did was I laid out a table for you. It looked like this. And I saw in discussions, I was very happy to see discussions uh, pepping up, peppering up with questions about this and people contributing tips and stuff like that. And I saw one student posted, a, uh, 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 put a post on the thread with an image, you know, like a cell phone image, I guess, of her notes. And she had the table written out and then she, down to the lower right, she had some numbers and calculations and stuff. And then she, you know, the, the people were talking about what she had written and stuff like that. All right. And so I was very happy to see you guys working with the table. We calculated basically what I did with the, the chain of questions, one through, I believe it was one through 10. Uh, I trotted you through step-by-step -step process of figuring out a downward free fall speed at any elevation I may ask you about, okay? Now the brain burner was at one of the elevations between, I believe it was between one and eight, all right? And we're going to repeat one of those today. Uh, now, tonight's homework is going to have another brain burner of this type, but be forewarned, I'm going to dial it up a notch. And it's good. so in other words, it's going to be like a deluxe brain burner of this type uh, so it'll be an extra challenge to you. Uh, and I'm going to set it to have like a, abundant attempts uh, so you can really practice and use it as a study tool. All right, so just think about it as going to the gym and practicing your three-point shot. Okay, this homework assignment. All right. Or uh, going to the batting cage and uh, trying to hit a curveball from a real live person. Instead of, the bat, instead of the pitching machine, all right? And you'll also have some uh, momentum uh, review also, a little bit of that, okay? But just study everything, 
you know, and just, you know, be ready. As I always say, expect the unexpected uh, because that's my way of saying, be prepared to think because I'm going to try to give you at least one or two questions and it might be one or two multiple choice questions where you have to put together concepts that you don't realize right now can be put together, right? So you're gonna be making a decision on the test. Ooh, can I really put those two concepts together and make a sensible decision about some information or make a calculation that comes out right, all right? So that's what we're up to. So exam two on Thursday, uh, be ready for that. All right, let's get down to uh, the homework problem. Now, this is the image, or this is the table that you had. You had an image of this. Good. And uh, the thing I want to point out here is I'm going to drop the momentum column. I gave you that just for, you know, some extra workout, something you can calculate. I mean, you have to get V first, your downward V. And then you, after that, you can calculate a momentum pretty easy. Uh, but anyways, I'm going to drop that momentum column for today. Um, and here's the table that we're going to work with. Now, the, the, the way that the problem was set up was so that the person holding the basketball up there at, at 10 meters elevation was holding it. It was at rest. So, the, so you know automatically, and I actually filled this in in the table, that the kinetic energy was zero, V squared was zero, and um, v, is, v uh, was zero as well. And actually, I didn't put it in on this table, but the, at the very bottom row, the gravitational potential energy, second column, that's also zero as well. It was on your homework. You can, if, you're, if you're tracing this out on you, you know, go ahead and trace this out, and we're going to be working on this table for the next you know, 20 minutes or so, okay? So, um, you know, I worked you through these questions, and I said, all right, let's just go step by step and figure out a downward speed. And the way to do that is to start with gravitational potential energy at the very top. Even if you don't care about the speed, well, you know what the speed is. All right? if, you, if you're trying to figure out, you know, like the speed at 6.2 meters uh, elevation, you still got to figure out GPE at the very top, all right? And because we want to put together the total mechanical energy that applies to every elevation, all right? So um, here's your calculation, MGY, and this is kind of a shorthand, all positive numbers. If you know that you're above the floor, MGY will work just fine, all right, for your gravitational potential energy. And notice I have a positive 9.8 meters per second squared for G, all right? And so if, if you, once you define the floor as zero, which I did in the homework, I forgot to type it in down here at the bottom of the second row or a second column. You can do that right now if you want. Matter of, well, I've got to, I'll try to do it on the last slide. Um, there's your calculation. So the mass is 0 0.620, 620 grams, a little bit more than a pound and uh, 9.8 meters per second squared for G, and the rafters 10 meters up, all right? Nice round number, all right? And if you calculate those out, you get 60.76. Now, if you were a little shaky, if you're, if you're, you know, did your, how many attempts did you have, five or six? Five, six, all right? If you're a little shaky, even after your sixth attempt, I'll go ahead and write this down and get your calculator. And you're going to be doing the calculations yourself in a few minutes, so you may as well get it out right now in your eye clicker too. All right, you're going to do a calculate. You're going to do a brain burner. I'm going to give you an elevation, and you're going to calculate V. All right, but we're just going step by step. First step, get GPE at the top level. And the good part about that is at the top level, I know that the basketball's rest is at rest, so the kinetic energy is zero. So if I can figure out GPE, I can also figure out the total mechanical energy. So now this question mark over here, 
Yeah, I can get that guy. Why? Because that is just the sum of the first two columns. All right? So 60.76 plus zero, ding. That's just 60.76. All right? So that's this calculation over here. And this one is conservation of total mechanical energy. All right? And that's the and actually that's the definition of it. We it, you know, this is the definition and according to definition, if I know that gravitational potential energy is 60.76 and if I know it's at rest, bing, my energy, total mechanical energy is 60.76 joules. All right? So that's good. All right? Now let me ask a question or let me ask for for questions, do you have, does anybody have a question about this? Yes. So you're saying, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be simpler to use conservation of total mechanical energy? for all levels? See, I'm, I'm, I'm way ahead of you. Good, good question. Wouldn't it be simpler? And the answer is yes. Now that we have it at one level, and it happens to be up there in the rafters, we know we could put ditto marks for everything all the way down the column. Now, I'm not gonna do that because um, I, I wanna stay at the top of this table, but you know, that's, you know, when you're doing this, if for some reason, you know, you find yourself in the next few days having to do a table like this. Just put d ditto marks. Once you get one number and you're confident that it's correct, just put ditto marks all the way down. All right. So yeah, you can you can pen once you get 60.76, you just fill it in all the way down. All right. So here we go. Now let's go down to the next level. And what was your name over there? Adrian. Adrian, here we go. 60.76 for total mechanical energy at nine meters above the floor. Now, at this level, we, we don't have a zero and a 60.76. Now, that was up in the rafters. Now, we've dropped a little bit. We've lost a little potential energy, and we've gained a little bit of kinetic. Matter of fact, what we've lost in potential, we've gained in kinetic. And that is why if I calculate MGY at nine meters, which we're gonna do in a second, I can automatically get the kinetic energy at nine meters elevation, all right? I've got, so I've got the, the right, if, if I can get two of those three columns, the three energy columns, if I can get two of them, I'll get the third one. All right? And once I get the, the, the column, the fourth column, the total mechanical energy, I've got all of that one. So then after I figure that out, once all I gotta do is either get a kinetic energy or a potential energy, and then I've got the other energy. All right, so uh, it gets easier and easier as we go. All right, so let's uh, continue with this. Um, Calculation, MGY. Who's got a calculation for that? Uh, what do you got? 54.684. Anybody verify 54.684? Good. All right. Yep, that's correct. All right, so fill that one in. And that's just MGY, 0 0.620 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second square times 9, because that's the elevation that we're at. Okay. And now the principle of conservation of total mechanical energy is whatever the leftovers I have in my energy equation, it's going to be kinetic. Uh, question. So the 60.76 in the measured root part, that's always? That's the total, capital E, that's the total mechanical energy. Yeah, it's, it's 60.76 all the way down. 
Well, yeah, it's the difference between 54.684 and 60.76. Because 54.684 plus leftovers equals 60.76. But, you know, your, your leftovers, your kinetic energy leftovers factor is going to be different at each elevation because you get faster and faster. So that number, you guys, in the third column is going to get bigger and bigger. And, hey, you guys, the number in the second column is going to get smaller and smaller because right? you're, losing, you're losing potential energy. Yeah. What is your name again? Jacqueline. Jacqueline. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it, if it was just coincidence or why I'm asking. Wait a minute now. Did you? Did you? Yeah. No, I'm still not. <laughs> oh, okay. Good. That's my fault, everybody. Okay. Ding, 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 ding. Yes, 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 yes. Because of the, uh, for Jacqueline. Jacqueline said, is it always that what, if you, if you have equal, the, the key is equal elevation changes. If you have equal eleva elevation changes, will the set of numbers downward for potential energy be the same as the set of numbers upward for kinetic energy? And the answer to that is yes, yes, yes. That, my wonderful students, is a pattern. And basically it's because of E equals GPE plus KE. You know, whatever one of them loses, the other one gains, and so the numbers are gonna match. Now if you take, you know, like some oddball, you squeeze in some oddball elevation like you know, 4.7 or something, that's going to be a little bit squirrely, yeah. But, um, but if, you, if you go, you know, 10, 9, 8, 7, all the way down to 0, ding, it's going to all look symmetric. All right. So what's the leftovers, you guys? 6.076, exactly. All right, so let's, let's get back here. No, what, what, what we mean is, oh boy, I gotta go through this whole table. Sorry, you guys. I thought this was animated differently. Da, 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 da. Well, all these cells of the table that you're seeing here animated um, allow you to figure out the leftovers of any other, you know, figure everything out. You feel, it's kind of like a crossword puzzle. You know, so if you like crossword puzzles, raise your hand if you like Sudoku. Anybody in here? I have never tried it. I've looked at it, and I thought, oh, no, I'm not smart enough for that. It's patterns. It's patterns, yeah, I, I guess I... So let me get down. Sorry, this is blooped up here. Yeah, Sudoku. You know what I like are, are the word scrambles. I like word scrambles and crossword puzzles. And you know, the toughest crossword puzzle in the United States is the New York Times. All right, um, so to answer a bunch of questions, here's the key. The difference between you know, this is E equals GPE plus KE, but with uh, uh, GPE subtracted over to the left side now, okay? So here's, let me get my cursor over here. Here's E, total mechanical energy, 60.76. Here's GPE, which we used MGY to figure out. You can always do it. To specify the elevation, bang, you got MGY, all right? And then you subtract them, all right? Now, the the... The formal uh, theorem is E equals GPE plus KE. So that means GPE is on the, on the right side of the equation. But it's, it's all right. I mean, you're calculating. This is equivalent. And you subtract it. And that lets you figure out the kinetic energy. Right? So now your leftovers here is no longer unknown. It's 6.076. 
All right? Now that's really nifty because that's equal to one half mv squared. All right? And that's going to let us figure out v squared. All right? So we're going step by step. Do mgy, use e, figure out leftovers, kinetic energy, and then shoot for v squared. How do you get it? Well, you use this equation. Definition of kinetic energy. Now, you know what the kinetic energy number is. It's 6.076 joules. And so that's equal to 1 half mv squared. And you know what m is? It's 0 0.62 kilograms. Right, so you got everything except v squared. All right, now, here's your plug-in step. And notice here in the second equation block, second level, I've changed joules into kilogram meter squared per second squared. And you might be saying to yourself, Dr. B, do you have to do that? No, I don't have to do it. But if I do it, I can cancel kilograms left and right. And that, my wonderful students, is lovely. It simplifies things up, all right? Now, over here, I have 0 0.5 and 0 0.62, and I have a V squared. So this is plug-in, and I changed my joules into kilogram meters squared per second squared. Now, let me pause for questions. If you have any question about this step, it, it, some students find this a little bit tricky. I want to make sure everybody's able to crush this on Thursday. I mean, if you, I'm not, I can't tell you what's going to be on the test. But I mean, if you did have something like this, hypothetically. <laughs> Questions? Uh huh. So everybody's a genius on this. All right. Good. So now we, in this third level in the equation block, um, I've, got, I've got kilograms canceled left and right, okay? And so I have 6.076 meters squared per second squared, and I got a regular 0 0.310 without any units on it, okay? It used to have kilograms, but now it's zip-zap over there. It's just a regular number, okay? And then my unknown is V squared. So now to clear that and get V squared by itself, I devote, divide both sides by 0 0.310. And the units that I have are all over on the left, meters squared per second squared. And that, my wonderful students, is what you want if, Kiesla, you're shooting for a V squared. Right? So, you know, you're shooting for a V squared, you want your other side of your equation to be meters squared per second squared. Okay, and if you see that, then you can say, all right. I don't have to go back and recheck. But if you, ca if you came up meters squared per second, then you, would, you could say to yourself, ooh, ooh I, I better go double check my calculations or my canceling or something like that. Okay? This is the way, this is called using the units to check your work. All right? So then you calculate this out, 6.076, and divide that by 0 0.310. Uh, who's got a number on that? 19.6. Anybody verify me on that? Good. Yeah. All right, 19.6. All right, so, so that's V squared. Now you're home free. That's not V, but all you got to do is take that and square root it. Okay. And notice here that I put meters squared per second squared inside the square root sign, inside the radical, that little kind of check marky thing. That's called a radical, all right? And the stuff inside is what's being radicaled. It's being square rooted, all right? And so you square root meters squared, get meters. You square, square root per second squared, you get per second. And you square root 19.6 on your calculator, and you get uh, 4.427. So your answer there is 4. Point, and hey, you guys are going to be doing this in about two seconds. So get your clickers ready and your calculator and your brain. Uh, and so, you know, like uh, on the clicker question and on the homework, the, 
the, uh, the, the task was uh, round off to the nearest 0 0.1 meters per second of speed. So in this case, it would be 4.4, all right? And then type that into the answer box, all right? Um, raise your hand if you feel good about at least one attempt on the brain burner in the homework 10. All right, that's a good number of hands, but it's not everybody. All right, now we're gonna try it again. Right, we're gonna try another brain burner, all right? And what I wanna emphasize to you is, um, you know, we're gonna do eight meters, okay? We're gonna do the next level down, but we could do, we could do two meters if we wanted to, uh, or we could do 1.7. Now that you know the basic strategy, you could do, you know, 2.45 meters or any other height that you want. So your strategy is figure out MGY. You already know the total mechanical energy column. That's 60.76 all the way down. And then the first step, MGY, calculate your leftovers. You get V squared, and then square root that answer to get V. All right, so you can get everything you want. And it'll work for every other column, or excuse me, every other elevation, every other row. You can make this row one row per centimeter if you want. All right, so you'll have 10 meters times 100. That'll be 1,000 rows. You, know, you can know the kinetic energy and the speed uh, centimeter by centimeter if you want. But we're just going meter by meter. So that's good. All right, so and it, you know, as I said, it allows you to calculate all the way down to the bottom. And now here I've got 0, 0.00 for GPE. Make sure you put that in because that allows you to easily calculate uh, kinetic energy at the bottom. Matter of fact, what is the kinetic energy at the bottom? 0. 0.676, right? No? Why are you grinning at me? You just, you, you're, what is your name? Lucy? Lucy's over here grinning at me like she's, she thinks I'm trying to trick you. Well, what's the, why, why are you, what's the answer then? All right, she, I could, sh I tried shaking Lucy. I'm looking right at her. It didn't work. Yep, 60.76 is the kinetic energy down there. So that's an easy one. You could have fi figured that one out, you know, like the, the very first step, you know, or actually the second step. Get the potential energy up there at 10 and then the kinetic energy down there. Um, what is your name again? I'm trying to find Jacqueline. Jacqueline. Jacqueline, yeah, this is easy down here. Symmetric. You know, partners, left and right partners. It's a good observation. I've never described it that way. Anyways, so you can calculate speed V at any position, even something that's not on the table. And it might break up the, the symmetry of your table. But you can still do it. I mean, the logic still applies, all right? So now, you ready? Ready on the right? You ready? OK. Ready on the left? Ready? Ready in the center. Go, baby, go. I got something in the back going like this. Here we go. OK, we got nine meters. We got that squared away. I want. The speed V at 8 meters. So calculate everything and get me downward speed V to the nearest 0 0.1 meters per second. So type in a number and then hit the send key. And can you bring the lights all the way up? They should be able to read this. All right, now we'll give you full lighting. Same, yep, same basketball. Zero, this is just a different elevation. Okay, 0 0.62. And, you know, there's variations in basketballs and stuff. So now remember, consult, kibitz, schmooze, interact.
talk with your neighbor. Don't frown at me. Talk to your neighbor. She's your study partner. Gosh. Even Lucy's back there. She's not even frowning at me now. Yeah, talk with your neighbor. It's, it's, it definitely helps. As the saying goes, two brains are better than one. It's assuming that everybody in here has a brain. I mean, theoretically, it's a kind of an assumption. Yeah. What? I want V. Get every, I mean, you gotta do, you gotta do GPE and, you know, you gotta do all, but I want V. Downward speed. So you don't have to type in a minus sign. If I ask you downward speed, that means like, that's like saying, what's the speedometer read on your way down at that elevation? See people calculating, create, madly calculating away. What? You already typed it in? Nice. You guys, whew. but is it correct? You know it's correct. Oh, very good. You're confident. See, that's what I want. Yeah, you want to you want to be able to. You know, like I was trying to shake Lucy and everybody, and I couldn't shake her. You know, that's, that, that's why, Lucy, that's why I do that. To see if, if you guys, how confident you guys are. Because if you're not confident of your answer, as you were, then what do you know? You know? If I could shake you off it, then, then you haven't got it. So... Good. See, look at that. There he is. No, over here. Lovely. Very good. See how everybody, if you look around, you'll see people interacting and coaching each other and stuff. That is why I always say find a good, at least one good study partner and talk things over, maybe even make a friend. Bruce, how are you doing? Have you made a friend yet? No, okay, good. I see you guys in the back eating snacks and making calculations. That's just like my son. He sees he, my son tells me, how am I supposed to do homework if I don't have snacks? So we try to give him a lot of snacks. How many we got here? 110. Question? What? Yeah. Yeah, I did. It's gonna it's gonna be maybe forty five Scantron and maybe three eye clicker, making up the last five points. Well, if it's if it came after which it did, after exam one, then yes, it'll be on the test. I'm not gonna tell you how many are gonna be on there. But it's, if it's fair game and if it's important, it'll be on there. Multiple choice or calculation or something. No, the study guide is mostly related to momentum calculations and kinetic energy. So you got a lot of stuff to study. As I always say, study everything. And... And, and don't forget, you know, it's not like we're going to ever stop talking about F equals MA. That was on the first test, and we're going to be talking about that to the, 
to the cows come home. So. 126. We're doing good here. All right, one minute starting now. Make sure you round off your answer to the nearest 0 0.1 meters per sec. I see some of you putting in answers something point something something. I want to the nearest tenth. I don't want to go past that. Okay, good. I see some of you changing. Round off carefully. Man, you got a real command post over here. All set up. Got your answer? <laughs> but is it correct? That's what I want to know. Okay, 15 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Two, one, zero. All right. I'll go back to presentation mode, please. Thank you. All right. Let's review the numbers. Now look at your notes. Hopefully you took notes in your calculation, in your notebook and stuff. Let's check it out. Anybody verify me there? All right. All right. How about this? Anybody verify me there? All right, and hopefully you all verify me on this 60 point. That's the whole point here. Okay, V squared, the moment of truth. 39 point dose. Anybody verify me on that? All right, so then I better get a lot of 6.3s. Let's take, let's go ahead and. And it looks like 89% of you got it right. Raise your hand if you got it right. Sweet. Remember how many students raised their hand when I asked how confident they were after their attempts? It was, it was a good number, but it wasn't nearly as much as this. So I am very, so that means I can make the test even harder than ever. No, no, no. But, but <laughs> I can, oh, well, okay. I don't have to make it harder than ever. I can just make it all brain burners. Of this time? No? Okay. Uh, all right. So you guys are... So just make a note. Etc. Below 8 meters. And if I ask you for 4.73 meters, you'll just do the same thing. Same strategy. And you'll be able to calculate... You'll even be able to calculate the downward momentum on the momentometer. So that'll be good. All right, now, um, last comment about homework. And we're going to do the demonstration here. And I want to give you a comment about homework. The homework tonight is going to be homework 10 the Space Jam Emergency. So you're going to see Michael Jordan and Bugs Bunny and uh, who's that guy? Bill Murray and Daffy, you know, all those guys in the homework. And so it's basketball, but guess what? It's not basketball on this planet. So everything is... I'm going to try to shake you. See if I can shake you. But I'm going to give you a, a, a bunch of attempts. 
So you can just crash and burn for the first four. And then on the fifth attempt, if you start clicking, that's going to be good. And I'll give you a bunch of attempts to work it out. Use it as a study tool. And there'll be some momentum stuff in there too. Now, I... Shh, 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 There's going to... There's not going to... There's not going to be study stuff for everything, but I want you to study everything. All right? And be ready for the exam. All right. Now... Um, Darian, bring the lights up. Darian is going to show you uh, some cool uh, angular momentum demonstrations uh, to close out class. So um, let me get my cursor over here.